Hello, everybody. Welcome to Straight Out of BS Podcast. I'm Jordan, as usual, your host, and I wanted to thank you guys. We're almost at 5K in views, so let's get it to 6K now. And we're almost at 9,000 hours of view time, so yeah, let's get to 10,000. <clears> you guys are kicking ass. Uh, before we get started, I'd like to do a moment of silence for the person still struggling with addiction, with thoughts, with anything like that. So on the count of three, I'm going to do a moment of silence. One, two, three. Okay, thank you for that. And with that being said, oh yeah, make sure you're liking the videos. I just keep on, I want to remind you guys, just keep, make sure you're liking the videos. It really helps the algorithm. And uh, yeah, without further ado, I'd like to introduce my guest for the day. Uh, go ahead and introduce yourself and what school you went to and what years. Okay, uh, my name is Danielle McKenzie. Um, I was at Spring Creek Lodge Academy from, uh, dude, I don't even um from 16 to 18 so um from 06 to 08 um yeah um before that i went to uh liberty high school in um isaco washington okay i'm actually from uh, seattle so <clears throat> not too far um so what were you doing like to get sent there do you know why you got sent there what's your parents I, I didn't at the time um but i i know now but um, uh, my parents, um, my mother, she's a drinker, and my dad, he worked a lot, and he had a, um, he, he's a longshoreman. He would fly back and forth between California and Washington, and um, I, we didn't know at the time, but he had a whole other um, family over there, right? So as a female, my mom was like going through major shit, right? Because she was being abandoned, you know, my husband, I mean, her husband wasn't giving her attention. She was going through all these types of emotions, you know, and she would take it out on, on me. And, um, uh, and then I started to rebel and I ran away. And my first time running away, um, it was like really crazy, brutal. Like my mom, like beat the crap out of me. I, and the person's house I ran to, they called the police and then my mom got arrested and um four days later uh there was some huge um samoan people breaking down my friend's door and they zip tied me and um i was like wearing a bikini it was summer and they like threw me in the car it was like a crazy like my friends were thinking i was getting kidnapped like yeah. it was it was i thought i thought my parents were selling me i i didn't know what i didn't it was, I've never, I, still to day, never had anything that ever happened. It was crazy. Yeah, that's crazy. Uh, I was going to ask you, you kind of already answered it, but <clears throat> when that happened to you, did you feel like you're being kidnapped? Like, you didn't know what was happening, right? You felt like I, you were being kidnapped. Huh? I'll tell you exactly how it went down. My friend was at summer school, and I was sleeping, and I heard, like, in my dream, my mom talking. And I was yeah. like, I woke up. And I like walked out and to the kitchen and the um, home answering machine was on. And my mom was like, look, they probably already got her. I'm sorry we had to be like this, but we didn't know what to do. And I answered the phone and I was like, who already got her? What, mom? mom? And she's like, Danielle, um, hey. And I was like, and then right when she was like, you know, I looked at the door, there was a sliding glass door. My dad was right there and he was like, pointed at me. And he walked away. I was like, what the fuck? And then these huge people came in and I was like, like, I didn't know. I was scared, you know? I, yeah. I was yelling for my dad and my dad was already in his car driving away, didn't even look at me. And I was like, I, I remember yelling, I'm sorry, I'll come home. Like, um, it was so traumatizing. And they zip tied me in my hands and my feet. And um, I was on my period. I think I just started my period. And they let me bleed in the back of the fucking car. Um, it was a horrible experience. And um, about, like, 10 hours through the drive, they gave me a packet that had some, like, candy in it and a, a letter from my mom. And she was like, we had no choice but to do this. You gave us no choice. When you told the police that I beat you, which she did, you know, um, she's like, you gave me no choice. So I really had no 
voice, you know? Yeah, yeah, I feel you. I'm sorry you had to go through that. <clears throat> a lot of people have had similar experiences with feeling like they're they're being kidnapped and not knowing what's going on. And it seems like in your situation, your parents were just trying trying to like pr project their issues onto onto you, like you were saying. So I'm sorry you had to go through that. Um, <clears throat> what do you remember about when you got there? And uh, like, what do you remember about like your first few days there? Like, did they did they go over the rules with you? Did they did they give you did they buddy you up anything like that? My first few days there were the most. That was probably the most traumatizing thing. Um, the family, uh, the family I went to is named Destiny, right? And all the girls were like kind of around my age. It was like um, different uh, ethnicities and stuff. And um, my first uh, group setting, everybody introduced themselves. And every single girl had, one girl said she was an acrophiliac, that she fucked dead people. Um, another girl said she killed her boyfriend's mom. Like, they all had these crazy stories. And I remember at the end of the group, I was crying, like, oh, my God. Like, I, you know, like, what the fuck am I doing here? Like, these, like I was so traumatized. And and I, I remember writing a letter to my mom and dad, like, you guys sent me to this place where these people are, you know, I, and it never got mailed to them because the next group, um, the family rep came and she had my letter and she was like, um, Danielle, this is your letter. And I was like, I didn't know they read the letters at that point. She was like, yeah, this is unacceptable. You guys need to tell her what happened. And then they admitted that they were, they lied to me, that they just pranked me as like a new person, like. Yeah, like, thing, you know? like hazing kind of, hazing kind of. Yeah, and I was like, I was confused. I I grew up in a fucking Christian home. Like, dude, I was like, I, I, oh, my God, I was traumatized. I was like, <laughs> like, it was, it really, it like, fucked me up. But, I mean, honestly, I went there like a virgin, never really done drugs. Um, yeah. Good kid, got good grades, played on, played sports, and I left there only to become a stripper, heroin addict, meth addict, prison. I mean, it, it's crazy. It's like that prepped me for that, for my life. It, but I, I think if my parents would have never sent me there, I would have never went down that path, ever. Yeah, yeah. I <clears throat> Just to give you a little bit more background on me, probably make you feel a little bit more, more comfortable too. I went to Spring Creek Lodge too, around the same time kind of that you were there. I was in, I went, I got there on uh, January 23rd, 2007, and I was there 22 months. I was the last person to graduate from there before it got shut down. And um, I actually, uh, when I got out, I got addicted to, uh, I started doing heroin and meth. I started injecting heroin and meth. Well, I started out smoking the, the oxys and then I worked up to doing heroin and then I started doing drugs, but like, I'm kind of the exact same situation. I ne I was like straight edge. Like I smoked weed and I like, I got sent there for like running away and smoking weed and like just started drinking alcohol, but I hated the taste of alcohol. I didn't even really drink like that. So when I got out, I felt like I'd been like, you know, you've taken away my, my teenage years for one and for two, it's just like, you know, like I, my parents were getting divorced. They came up to let me know that they were going to get divorced right before I graduated. And I don't want to make this all about me, but I just wanted to give you a little bit more like background so you feel a little bit more comfortable. I've been through almost the same thing and I actually have 18 plus months on just weed now. So that's cool. Yeah. So um, <clears throat> when you got there, um, so they, they put you into destiny. Did you, how long after you were there did, did uh, you go through your first seminar? Uh, I think within the first three weeks, um, and I got chose out within the first like half an hour, probably. Okay. Um, and I honestly, I stayed level zero um, the whole time I was there. Um, I I, uh, I I didn't I made it to the third seminar, but only because Cliff liked me. Um, Cliff, you uh, the um. Yeah, I don't know. He took a real liking to me, and he would um, like come uh, take me out of school and let me go back to like you know Chafin's house and like wash cars and like um, like hang out and stuff and like you know it it became like a regular thing. It became like kind of like my school. I would you know like we would march. You know when you'd be in the cabins, 
and yeah. then you mark the, and you mark by Cliff's office and you drop off papers, I would be dropped off. I would get dropped off and I would sometimes you would tell me you come outside and you go, um, but then be uh, bring a friend. And I would I'd pick a friend, you know, to come with me and then yeah. we we would go with him. We didn't go to class and whatever else. And um uh, yeah, I, I uh yeah, it it was um I learned like real quick like that it really wasn't about point system, it was more like survival of the fittest and and that that these people are not they're not above us, they're below us and, and uh and like I mean I'm telling you I was a freaking virgin. I hadn't even kissed the boy. I like I didn't even understand like I mean, but I learned real quick with Cliff, like, um, how to use, like, uh, my, um, I don't even know what the word would be. Um, like your personality? Yeah, like, like, he, he, like, he, like, took a liking to me, you know, and, um, uh, like, a real liking to me, you know, and I, I could get away with anything. Um, like, they were going to send me to Jamaica, like, two times. Yeah, and he that too yeah yeah and i mean like one time they had me in worksheet like on the floor and like every all the staff and they're like you know you didn't give me my ticket you know my they, they let me talk to my mom my dad and they were like we're sorry we have to send you there you know and and cliff you know came in at the last minute like you know like to save me it was just like <laughs> It almost, it almost, that kind of stuff sounds to me like grooming, like he's grooming you, sort of, at that oh, age, too, you know well, what I mean? He, he, yeah, he yeah. groomed me, and yeah. then had to groom other girls. Oh, yeah. Like, yep. I, 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 uh, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, now, like, being an adult, I'm telling you, like, I didn't even understand, like, I didn't even have a boyfriend. I was, like, it's just so crazy, you know, and then like after that it like shaped me, you know, to be able to here I am now I'm being a stripper and I know how to like it's like the same cycle, you know, the way I worked him. I'm working like it's just like it's just a different um now I'm at the strip club working, you know, for money, but at, at Spring Creek I was working for time, freedom, candy bar. Yeah. Um you know, and uh <laughs> It's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, it's disgusting how they do that to people, especially you know young younger women. You know what I mean? Like it's just like it's, it's horrible. It's horrible. Yeah. <clears throat> I also uh, I actually rebelled for my first year there. They almost like I said they almost sent me to Jamaica. I because when I first got there I was like man fuck this place I'm not gonna do anything. So like little skinny and you had shorter blonder hair or like 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 did they cut your hair like you were like. Um, and worksheets a lot. Um, yeah, yeah, I was, that was probably me. That was probably me. Yeah, because we were there, because uh, if you were there at that at that time, you said, then we were probably there at the same time. So, yeah, I was getting removed almost all the time, like every day for the first year I was there. Until they threatened me with Jamaica and they said, you know, look, you can either start working your program or we're just going to send you to Jamaica and we're going to just tell your parents afterwards. They were like, well, we're not even going to tell them we're doing that or ask them. We'll just send you there and tell them. And I was like, okay, no, fuck that. I was like, I'll do whatever you say. Want like, <laughs> pretty much. Did they do to kids over there and stuff like that. What's up? Did they tell you what they do to kids over there and shit like that? <clears throat> oh yeah, I heard all the time that they would like, if you didn't want to listen there, they don't have child protection laws and they'd like break your yeah. arm, and shit like that. So I was like, man, fuck that. Uh, people yeah. are like, you don't want that. You don't want that, bro. Just like do it, do what you need to do. And so. After they threatened me with that, I just said, "Okay, man, I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually try." And then from that family point, in. what's up? What family were you in? Uh, I was eventually I was in all the lower level families because I dropped into all of them. But I started out in honor family. I started out in honor family. So I would like get level three and get out of the family or whatever, um, and then I would drop back into another family, and then I'd get back up to level three and drop back down into another family. So I, like I I saw both sides of it. Like I I worked my program and I fucking was like huge rebel there too. So yeah. I was like a mixed bag there. It was crazy. <clears throat> How long were you there? Two years. <clears throat> oh damn! Uh, my birthday came around and my mom gave me a 
exit plan of a bus to get to Idaho with fifty dollars. And I said, shoot it. Yep, I'm taking that shit. Yes. And I remember I was walking down the road, right? And um, my family rep, uh, the my uh, upper levels, because um, Cliff put me in upper levels. And um, I remember she was like, like telling me, you know, like you don't do it, you know, don't. And I was like, bitch, I'm gone. <laughs> like I'm gone. I'm taking the fifty dollars. I'm gonna sell this budget, bus ticket. I don't give a like. I don't care. Like I'm gone. And uh, I remember walking down the road, and I I remember looking back, and like my lower level family, like Destiny, all the girls were like crying, you know. And I just remember like looking at them, like, oh, it makes me emotional. And um. And um. I just kept looking forward and then I seen like I seen somebody like 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 almost a mile down I could see someone like something moving I thought it was a deer at the time you know I was like fucking wildlife out here you know and then I get closer and I noticed it was my mom my mom was like peeking around the corner with my uh um my soccer coach from where when I got sent there my yeah. soccer coach's wife and they were like both peeking around the corner, like they didn't want to get seen, you know? Yeah. Like they were scared. Yeah. They were scared that the facility was gonna see them helping me. Yeah. yeah. And I, I noticed it was them, you know, I just like ran to my my mom and um I started puking. I don't know why, but it made me like puke. I started puking and um my mom was like, you know, I'm not gonna let you go to Idaho, you know, and and um I just I fell asleep on her lap and I, then when I woke up, I started telling her and my soccer coach's wife, everything that had happened to me. And my mom was just like, thought I was lying. You know, she's just like, Oh, like I, I, I fell asleep and I or pretending to fall asleep. And I heard her telling my soccer coach's wife, like, this is what they told me she's going to do. She's going to lie. You know, she's going to, and I just remember thinking like, like you dumb bitch. Like, no, I'm not lying. Yeah. Yeah, after all of that, you still think I'm lying? After all of that? Like, they don't even know what we went through and shit. <clears throat> None of that. And I, I completely, I can relate to you, because when I got out, like, my dad, believe me, my dad never really wanted me to go in the first place. It was more like a, my mom was like, hey, if you don't, if you don't go along with this, we're done. And they ended up getting divorced anyways, but essentially, my, so my dad believed me. And he can never, like, nobody can ever, like, fully understand completely how, what we went through and how, what it felt like unless they were us. But I told him enough to, like, this is how it felt for me. And I tried telling my mom that. And she, she heard me, but she, or she listened, but she didn't hear me. Like, you know what I mean? There's a difference between listening and hearing. And it's like, she didn't hear what I actually, like, she doesn't understand what I went through. And, like, I, I feel like part of her, like, doesn't believe that it was, like, so horrible. Because, like, I, at one point I got sent to intervention for three days this one time. And I fucking, they brought me out and I, like, collapsed because my body didn't know how to fucking, like, since I had been taken away from all that stimuli for so long, I couldn't even stand when I got out. So, there was pretty fucked up shit they did to us there. Uh, did they, uh, did... Uh, let's see. Did you see in, um, uh, in worksheets? Did you have to do Superman's? What are those again? I might... Where they have you lay on the ground, and um, your face can't touch the ground, and your arms and your legs, like you have to like hold them up off the ground, like, like. Kind of like kind of like you're going like this, but the uh, like, stomach. You know, and and you couldn't let it, and they would, and like uh, like the the. The lady, whoever would be working, would be like, "I'm gonna go to the bathroom," and she would tell like this, the 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 upper levels that was there, like, "Watch her. If she drops, you need to let me know." And and it was almost like, like so fucked up because they would like feel bad for me, but as soon as she'd come back in, they'd be like, "She dropped. She she let her arms drop," you know, and like I'd get in trouble, and like then they take me up to the fucking um, uh, what was it called? The place past the hungry horse um. Uh, oh, Teton, Teton, or fucking was it Teton or the other fucking uh, which like wherever the hunger was, there was like this fucking like uh cabin thing, like um, that was Teton, I think. Sometimes, what's up? Where upper, le upper levels would meet for groups sometimes. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. You had two floors, yeah, yeah, 
Yeah, I know what and you're talking about. Yeah. They would like take me up there and then like I would like they would have me do like 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 workout routines and like um they had me cut my hair one time. Uh and they had me cut it from where my hair like when I had got sent there, my hair was bleached blonde. And then yeah. it had grown out, right? So like like here. So I had like dark roots to here and then blonde. So they made me cut my hair from the dark root. So I had like this weird ass boy like haircut, like and like it was just it, and it really it was because the the new staff was like a young girl from the city from from uh Thompson Falls and um she liked Cliff and she was jealous because yeah. Cliff mom like picked me to you know whatever so she cut my hair and I remember when Cliff seen me the next day he was like what happened oh my god come to my office right now what happened and I'm like they cut my hair they made me cut my hair and he like made a big deal about it and like um I think that late that girl ended up getting fired or um I know I didn't she wasn't our uh she didn't I didn't see her anymore but yeah, yeah it's a lot of traumatizing things you know it's weird shit like, <clears throat> for sure for sure <clears throat> did you ever try and run or did you what did you see any runners or do you remember any runners there um i didn't run because i remembered the drive there and my drive there was like me making like marks every, like yeah like yeah. where i could get away okay i remember this like remember marks this? yeah sand marks dude like i remember they let me out to go to the bathroom and i like fucking like Dropped like you can't like I was like trying to do like Hansel and Gretel breadcrumbs you know I was like I didn't know I still didn't know what I thought I was being sold you know I didn't so I remember I was I and I remember going fuck I'm not getting out of here this is a long drive so walking is gonna be even worse yeah, and then yeah. I remember there would be girls that would run I remember this one girl named Julia that ran and she stole a camera and she was like in the woods like taking pictures of herself what the fuck <laughs> yeah i remember that she had like pictures of herself like in the woods like doing all this weird shit <laughs> yeah. and, like, she was gone for like a little bit but like she, she, there's and then she dropped to lower levels and she came in our family and she was like yeah there was nowhere to go i there's no <laughs> she's just like i gave up <laughs> the photo shoot bitch okay whatever fuck it <laughs> That's crazy. Do you, do you remember? Uh, did they make you use their do stuff in the rock pit when you were there? Like exercises in the rock pit? Throw stuff in the rock pit? No, like exercises and stuff in the rock pit. You know where the you know the rock pit I'm talking about, right? Near Staff Central. What are you talking about? Yeah. They made you do workouts and shit in there. Um, they had like uh these routines, like the the like like the family mom. Uh, or or the fucking um, uh, the upper levels, you know. Uh, what are they called again? Um, uh, junior staff. Junior staff, you know, would like have this like routine we had to do, and then like, um, like we get you know our stupid little point system. We'd get cat, you know, two cat this cat. Oh, you you know you you burped. You were you were looking at this. <laughs> you weren't paying attention. You you're not listening. You know you uh, you were talking when I was talking, and it's basically just them now being exactly what they're called junior staff, and projecting their own problems onto us. And it's like it's a whole bunch of evilness, dude. Evil. <clears throat> evil. I was I was quite a bit different when I got onto upper levels because because i had seen it from both sides because i rebelled for the first year and stuff i i knew what it was like to struggle and to get like to get cornered and like even to have people come into the family and like target target me are you still there still there yeah sorry someone was calling me right now <clears throat> okay so i knew what it was like to like be targeted by somebody in a family or like you know i so i knew what it was like so when i got in the upper levels i actually took people under my wing that i saw getting picked on and like consequence like because you know there was some people there who would just like point yeah. certain people out and just like gang up on them and shit yeah and so i was like i'd stick up for those people and be like look if you consequence them and like you're bullying them type shit i'm gonna consequence you for it because that's some bullshit 
because I know what it's like. And so I, I would help people out and I'd be like, if you ever need to talk to somebody, just to ask a staff member to call me down on lower facility and I'll come talk to you. Because I, I knew what it felt like to like not have anybody to fucking talk to. And like, I knew how hard it was there. So, that's cool. yeah, so <clears throat> that's what I did. Um, what was the craziest thing that you experienced there or saw there or heard about? And what was, uh, what was the best thing, if there was anything good about it, if there was The anything. best thing for me was, um, like, I'm a nurturer, you know, I um, I like to make people, um, like, you know, feel better about themselves. And uh, I can say that every girl that I met, I gave them all a nickname, right? Everyone had a nickname. And, like, I would see girls that would come in that I knew, like, like, you know, weren't the popular girl. They weren't like, you know what I mean? And I would make them feel like, you know, like, like, like they were mad, they mattered, they were seen, like they weren't invisible. And uh, that made me, that gave me joy. Like, you know, I would give every girl a, a, a different nickname, you know? And, yeah. and, and like, and then at one point they even tried to make a new a rule about nicknames. Um, because I, you know, and of course I didn't follow that shit. And um, like uh, that, that was one of my, my favorite things was making other girls like feel like they weren't invisible and they mattered. And because there were some really troubled young people there, you know? Yeah. And uh, I just feel like that was just not the right place for them. Oh, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah, so that that was um, a highlight for me. One of the craziest things was uh, when uh, Cliff, took, um, me, and um, I don't know if you remember when um, Shaven's uh, niece was there. Yeah, I remember that. Um, we got to go to his house, and he let us smoke weed. What? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> and um, was it some good weed or was it some bullshit? Like, it was like boof, you know. But at the time, we were like. Hey, what's wrong? <laughs> like we're all high because like, and then he let he like let us watch YouTube on how to make um uh a weed uh cookie 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 edibles? brownie or edibles yeah it was like it was like cookie brownie butter or some weird shit <laughs> yeah um and I just thought that was like like we were being like so bad and like it was like you yeah. know like and like we were we were like sworn to secrecy but I wanted so badly to go back and like be like. <laughs> They yeah. really knew what I did, like, yeah. um, and then, um, you know what, uh, when I was there, there was a boy from my high school that I went to homecoming with, and, uh, um, when I saw him, you know, it was, like, kind of, like, it made me feel, I don't know, it was crazy, because it was, like, a piece of home, you yeah. know, and I, I just, like, I don't know. I just, it like, I don't know. Cause I was like determined to like, you know, like leave there and stuff, yeah. but I saw how struggling he was and we ended up being in the same like family, upper level family. And like, um, like me and him still talk to this day, you know? And, um, uh, that kind of made the experience like as traumatizing as it was, like at least something, you know, I mean, I could say something, came from it other than learning how to fucking learning about meth heroin uh and everything else because i didn't know nothing about that shit yeah. i just was gonna be like okay wait what do you do and then what and, oh my god <clears throat> um let's see um so let's talk about like when towards when you got out and whatnot um <clears throat> What happened when you got out? Like, uh, let's talk about like, for for example, I I want to talk about like triggers and stuff now from the program. Like for me, I'm always waiting for the other shoe to drop. I'm always like, I have a really hard time trusting people. I when I first got out, it was really hard for me to even talk about what I went through. You kind of talked about this a little bit, like with your mom trying to tell your mom what happened and her not believing you. And so it was hard for me to talk to people. It's even still hard for me to talk to people. Like. Um, so like, what were you, what was the hardest thing for you when you got out and like, what happened to you when you got out? Like, hello, calling me, sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, 
when I got out, um, I, uh, I, um, like I said, my mom didn't believe me. That I was a liar. My dad didn't even look at me because he knew. He knew the whole time. He was the beginning. He believed me always, and he couldn't even look at me because he hated himself, you know? Yeah. And, uh, uh, I ended up going to a high school party, like, of people that, I, you know, <clears throat> yeah, people, people calling me himself. Um, um, and, um, uh, um, what was I saying? Um, you, you were saying when you got out, you went to this party? This oh, yeah, I went to this party. Yeah. And, um, Damn. Can I call you right back? This number keeps calling me over and over and over. <laughs> yeah, we'll just do it into two parts, okay? Okay, thank you. I'm so sorry. I'll call you right back. Yeah, yep. Yeah, call me back. Right. Okay. Okay, so yeah, you went to the high school party, right? Yeah. And um, that was like the first night I ever did like coke. Uh, and then I did math, and it was kind of like I was excited to do it because all the girls like that I had met there had talked about it, and I was like the only one who had it, you know. And um, once I did that, it almost like filled a void in my life where I was like felt empty, you know, and like no one understood me. I was like the weird, you know, I went from being an all star soccer player captain you know the soccer team to um being sent away to some montana boarding school you know and like um i don't know i never got that sense of stability back i never fucking um i don't know it just uh, it just opened doors that i never thought i would go down ever you know I feel you. I, life and uh, my life has not been not been a good one. Easy, fun, or huh. I don't know. I wouldn't even say it's life. Yeah. So, so you're not. So, <clears throat> how are you doing nowadays? Are you are you doing okay now? No. Homeless in California. You're homeless. Yeah. <clears throat> I know what that's like. <clears throat> I definitely know what that's like. I spent, I actually just recently got into my housing after fucking being homeless for fucking really long fucking time. Sure. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's, <clears throat> I'm sorry you're going through all that. So I assume you're still in your addiction then? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I will keep you in my thoughts for sure. Um, do, do you have like, do you, do you want to get clean? Like, is there a yeah. party? No. I don't even know how to. Yeah, I know exactly how that feels. I know exactly how that feels. You know, like, like, um, my boyfriend just recently got arrested, and so I have like all this stuff I posted online because I can't be storage units. Um, so all these people are calling me. Um, but um, yeah, like I'm in my storage unit, you know, right now, and I it's just me and my my dog, you know, my dog, like my family, and really just always been me and my dog, and um, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I just feel like, you know, my life was not going down this way. I don't think I would have went this way if I hadn't have went through what I went through being, like, ripped away from, like, like what I, I mean, I was, like, a good kid, you know? I mean, 
um, I, I don't know. I just, it's just crazy. It, it, I feel like it really shaped my life, you know. And I feel like I'm still like working the system, like just a different. Yeah. <clears throat> I completely understand that. And I feel your pain. I mean, I literally, I was just recently, you know, I was recent, just recently in <clears throat> pretty much in your shoes, homeless. And so I feel for you for sure. And I just want you to know if you ever need anybody to talk to, I'm here and I understand. I get it. Like I went through the same program that you did. I used to be addicted to drugs. Um, do you, I, I do, let me ask you this. If you could go back in a time machine and not go through that, Knowing what you know now, would you do it? Um, I don't know because I'm such a nurturer, you know, I like, like I, I have a few girls that like, you know, still to this day hit me up and like tell me, you know, that like how much like I did for them, like making them feel relevant and like, they, you know, and it's like, I don't know. And, and like, I don't know. Like, I think if I was to come to ever come to California and I didn't like know what I learned there, I wonder what, what like, I don't know. I just kind of like, I feel like, honestly, I feel like I got prepared for my next chapter on life. Like, if that makes sense, like, <laughs> Like, I I didn't know I was going to end up being in California and, um, you know, like, homeless. But I feel like I got prepared by going to Spring Creek, you know. Um, um, but then again, yeah, I guess if I could go back in time and I never went there, maybe I wouldn't be here now. Um, I don't know. Yeah, it's a hard question. I ask everybody that. <laughs> <clears throat> it usually catches people off guard. Uh, that and then uh, it, knowing what you know now is it your belief that these places uh, should or even could be fully regulated, or uh, do you believe that they should just all be shut down? The ones that are still open. They should all be shut down. Okay. Okay. Um, and at the end of the day, these people that are staff, at the end of the day. They are human beings just like us. They have thoughts like us. They have made mistakes like us. And they're in no higher anarchy to, you know, to uphold any type of like, it's kind of like how the police are now, you know, like police brutality. Like they're just, the, you know, it's like you're, you're, you're just a person like me who has a badge who, who gets to like brutalize me because whatever I project a person that you remember in high school, you know, it's just, we're all at the end of the day, we're human beings. And, um, and that's exactly what staff was. They were human beings. You know, I, I remember I seen like, you know, my female, like upper levels, like family rep and she would like flirt with the guys, you know? And like, why? Because when it all boils down to it, she grew up in a fucking small town in Montana. And now all of a sudden she's got this power position where she's got these these guys that are looking at her like, you know, and she was able to be like, have that control. And then she was mean to the girls, you know, because then she's just a person who has been through it and has been able to hide it, conceal it, and, and it just, it, it's, 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 um, it's just, yeah, it's fucked. Yeah, it's messed up. <clears throat> a lot of people have used their power, for sure. A lot of people do. Um, your relationship with your parents. How's your relationship with your parents now? And could you ever forgive them? My uh, before and before you answer, my thing is, I've forgiven my parents. I'm never gonna forget it though, right? So exactly. That, I have that tattooed right here. Forgive and never forget. Yeah. I forgive. I'll never forget what they did. They find a way, 51% ownership of me to some people that they didn't even know. They never even went to this facility. You know, my mother and father had a pamphlet that had pictures of girls horseback riding on water. Oh, yeah. I don't doubt it. I don't know about you. I never saw a horse. 
I never saw a blob. I never saw a fucking the pamphlet they showed me. I was like, "Where's this summer camp at?" Because that's not where. I, what the? Like they didn't even check. They didn't even go look, and they just signed away my rights. And like, even if they wanted to take me back, they couldn't because they signed away fifty percent ownership of me. So I. Yeah. And, I don't even have a relationship with them. We don't speak at all. Okay. okay. I haven't spoken to them in probably like 13 years. <laughs> all right. Um, let's see. <clears throat> did you, uh, did you spend a lot of time in intervention? Yeah. Most of my days were there. Same here. The, um, when you were in there, did they, uh, do you remember them leaving you in there overnight? Most of the time I was left overnight and um, I would have these sheets I had to fill out. Um, like, like, and, and, and it had to be so many words. Not like the self-correction form, you know, where you would just like say what you did wrong, what you're going to do. No, no, these ones were like big, like they were like bigger, like more words, you know, and I would just be like, I'm not, I'm not doing it. You know, I would like chew on my pencil. I would fucking like break in, you know, and then, so they would just keep me there. I sometimes wouldn't even get to eat. They wouldn't even, sometimes then they would walk, you know, the work to the hungry horse to eat. I would get, I would stay behind because I was uh, such a problem. And then that's where Cliff would come in, you know? Yeah. And, um, yeah, so, yeah, I'd be there overnight, but I mean, I wouldn't be always in work. I'd be in the, um, the, uh, that mobile home that, you know, you pass by on your way to school. Yeah, yeah, it's Staff Central. Staff yeah. Central. <laughs> I don't know if I can't remember any of the names. <laughs> yeah, it's, sometimes it's hard to remember the names. Um, I have a question. So, um, I assume you're, you're addicted to opiates, right? Yeah. Okay, have you ever tried methadone? Because honestly, I didn't tell you that, but I'm on methadone right now. I do methadone and weed. That's all I do. And I'm thinking, I'm working on getting off methadone, but have you ever tried methadone or Suboxone? So I used to, okay, so I was on heroin, right? And then um, I uh, I had gotten pregnant and um, um, I got on methadone. And uh, I ended up, um, miscarrying and then I went right back to opiate you know but but I did get sober for a little bit but I went right back and then now I went from fent I mean from heroin to fentanyl so now I'm on fentanyl and um I have some subutex but um I I just I don't know I don't really know how it, I don't I'm so lost in my addiction and in life <clears throat> that you don't know how to go about it i don't even see a way out at this point you know i know how that feels i know how that feels <clears throat> i for sure know how that feels and it, it's overwhelming isn't it because you don't know what to do it's okay to cry you're fine I, I understand what you're going through. Maybe not, well, not exactly, but <clears throat> in a way I do because I was addicted to drugs. But I, the only reason I ask is because methadone has fucking saved my life, like literally. And like, it, I never would have, like, I, ne I don't think I would be where I'm at right now if it wasn't for methadone. So like, I don't know if you haven't tried methadone or su subutex or suboxone. See the thing, I'm gonna educate you a little bit. So subutex is, uh is the pill right but it doesn't have the opiate blocker in it suboxone has an opiate blocker in it so if you were to take suboxone strip right yeah that's the strip <laughs> if you were to take suboxone which is the strip after you've done opiates it will put you into instant withdrawal right so don't take suboxone if you're <clears throat> if you have opiates in your system <clears throat> subutex doesn't have that opiate blocker in it so that will just help you feel better I would 
honestly try methadone over that though because methadone just will just work better for me i'm just making a suggestion and if you need any like you, help you, like you like you went from one addiction to another because now you're addicted to a methadone yeah a little bit yeah that's why i'm going to get off methadone soon but see the thing about uh, <clears throat> the thing about the methadone is I'm it's all about harm reduction in my eyes right so I, I went from doing hard drugs right to methadone and then now I'm gonna work on getting from methadone off of drugs completely you stop like what was it for you that made you like what was it that made me do drugs no what made you like finally realize you're like you're done you know wait what was that you cut out like what what was it that finally made you like realize and know like you're done like you wanted to get <clears throat> when i had i was up to like a quarter ounce a day of heroin a day and then i was doing um when i got to a quarter ounce of heroin a day and about a gram of meth in a day and i was doing it way too much i had no support my family disowned me. I was homeless. I had no friends. I didn't have anybody to turn to except my family, and my family would only help me if I got sober. So it was initially, I was doing it for my family, and I have a friends with benefits relationship. Uh, we're not, we don't date or anything. We're just friends with benefits and whatnot. And I got sober before her, and then she decided to get sober, and so she's in L.A. right now. I'm actually worried about her. <clears throat> I hope she didn't relapse. I haven't heard from her in like a couple weeks, but so that's worrying me a little bit. But anyways, I went into rehab and I just decided, you know, I just got sick of it. Like, and also I just did, I don't want to die. Like, I'm, I don't want to die. I, I have like, if, if I do things right, I can live another like 50 years. I don't want to fucking die in the next like 20 or 30 years. Like, I don't want to be the drugs. What's up? Did you lose a lot of friends to like fentanyl and like heroin? Oh, oh yeah, just this year alone, I've lost seventeen people. Just this yeah. year alone, I lost twenty-eight. Yeah, so it's I definitely understand, and I just want you to know that I'm here to talk to you if you need any support and if you need any help or if you want to get on methadone and you need to talk to somebody that's on it for information. Let me know because I'd rather you do something. See, the thing with methadone is at least you're going to get it every day, right? If you show up, you'll get it every day. You don't have to worry about <clears throat> how I'm going to make money for my next fix, how I'm going to fucking do all this shit all day long, right? You, you, and it's, you take it once a day and it's done, right? So you can just some, semi get back to a normal life. And then once you get stabilized, like I, I'm trying, I've stabilized myself pretty much, and then I'm going to get off methadone. But <clears throat> it's just stepping stones. And I just want you to know that you're not alone and I'm here for you. And yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And so with that being said, um, <clears throat> is there anything else you want people to know about your experience? Anything you would tell like parents that maybe you're thinking about sending their kid to a program like this or anything yeah. like that? <clears throat> I to come forward and realize that what could be um sexual abuse um actually i watched the documentary with uh uh Perry Hilton. yeah and uh like that kind of made me realize a lot of things and like you know and then, and then after that you know i became a stripper and then like a lot of things that i went through with like i literally still talked to cliff like up like like four years ago i like still talk to him he would send me money i would send him like videos of me like like dancing or like doing whatever yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. like i like like so like the grooming you know and they like, went beyond like the school you know he like found me after like uh like he like came down and saw me in, um in long beach at a strip club like like so it like went you know like like way past like just like grooming me as like a little like i feel like a little girl yeah, um, yeah. 
Like it literally only stopped four years ago. Because all yeah. that shit fell with the um, uh, in Montana with like Chapin and stuff. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's when he stopped contacting me. But um, and I even had a hard time when he stopped contacting me because I thought I did something wrong. And um, it's just a whole a bunch of fuckery, you know, but uh, uh, I, I would I would say to any parent that wants to send their, their kids somewhere, make sure you go there. And you go where they're going to be. You sit where they're going to sit. You see what they're going to see. You look at what they're going to look at. You know, because if you don't know, anyone can tell you anything. Because I know I used to sit there and Cliff used to tell parents Oh, he was so good at he he was the best with his words. And um and he would have like girls sitting there with their tops off, you know, while he'd be on the phone with parents. And um Yeah, that's all I can really say. Is just make sure, you know, if you're if you feel like your kid really needs that, make sure you go where they're gonna go. Experience what they're gonna experience, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> for sure, for sure. Well, I also, uh, would you be willing to do a part two sometime in the future? Just like if nothing else, just to check up on you and just, I just want to check up and make sure. And I'm also, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to post your, um, I'm going to, I'm going to, I have a, um, like, I have like half a million followers on, um, um, I know it sounds kind of like retired, but on Google maps, I get like paid to make reviews on, um, businesses and stuff like that. I'm going to. I'm gonna post your podcast on there, and um, hopefully, you know that can like help get it out there too. Hell yeah, hell yeah! But yeah, <clears throat> please take care of yourself. You're beautiful. You deserve like to be happy. Okay, so just like don't don't forget that, and just try and love yourself, and just you'll make it through this. Okay. Yeah. You'll make it through this, and like I said, if you need any help or guidance, I'm here. Reach out. Yep. You have a wonderful day. Hey, you too. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye.